Hello, my creeplings. Third installment of the Ash Williams saga. We're talking about Army of Darkness tonight. This one's a little bit different than the previous two. Um, this one has a lighter rating. I want to say it was PG-13, um, mostly for language and violence. Um, so, recap. Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2 took place over the course of two nights in the Nobi cabin. At the end of Evil Dead 2, we have opened a time vortex, and Ash and the Delta get sucked in and deposited in the year 1300 AD, in what I'm assuming is England, because everybody's got cheesy accents. Um, this is definitely the most heavily comedic in the series. This is the final feature film featuring Ash Williams as our protagonist. After this, we move into the television show territory. Um, so let's get started, shall we? This one, definitely, I had a friend, I just lent this to him. He's a youngin' at work, he's a big film uh, fanatic. Hi, Micah, hope you're watching this. He put it pretty, blo uh, pretty uh, succinctly when he said it reminded him of a Monty Python movie. I think that's an apt um, description, an Americanized Python movie to a point. There's lots of, uh, this is a, more of a fantasy adventure with some horror elements, animated skeletons, etc. the deadites. Um, watching this, you can definitely see where a lot of these guys went on to work with Hercules and Xena and those crews. It kind of, it, it definitely gives you the feel for that. We have some bigger names in this one. Not a whole lot, but some. Um, we have, of course, Bruce is returning as Ash. Um, M. Beth Davids from, uh, Matilda, Miss Honey, or she was, I can't remember the name of the character, but she was in the, uh, Matthew Lillard 13 Ghosts. She's in here as a character named Sheila. Uh, Marcus Gilbert is one of our English nobles, Lord Arthur. Ian Abercrombie plays our wise man. Richard Grove plays Duke Henry the Red. And I, I don't know if that was a put on accent or if he just uh, naturally had that, but I love listening to him talk. He's got a lovely Northern burr. It, it, it's, it's great. Um, Timothy Patrick Quill is the blacksmith. Now he shows up later in another Bruce Campbell vehicle. Um, My name is Bruce, which eventually we will talk about on this channel. Uh, he plays our blacksmith. Um, Bridget Fonda makes a little cameo at the beginning because, again, we have to go through flashback to start it off with. She's Linda this time around. Now, three different actresses. They're, they're all the same Linda, just a heads up. But because of rights issues, we both Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness have to do a quick flashback recap. So, of course... They got a different Linda actress. Um, cameo by Bill Mosley, horror icon himself. He's one of the Dead Eye captains. Um, and uh, Ted's in it, but it's a game of Spot the Ted. He plays um, three different characters and he does random skeleton voices. Um, I'll let you figure out who's who when you watch. So... Um, this one was done in 93. It was released in February 19th, 1993. So at this point, Bruce has a lot more under his belt. I think he had two Maniac Cop movies. Shortly after this, he'd get his, his own leading, uh, TV sh leading role in a TV series as the title character in Fox's Briscoe County Jr., which I still have yet to watch. It is on my list. Just need to get a hold of it. Um, but Sam wrote it, or directed it. Sam wrote it with his older brother, Ivan. Now, Ivan's the what I who I consider the quiet Raimi out of the uh, three boys. He's actually a, a doctor. I think currently he's working in an emergency room in Chicago that I had um, read. But he goes in and he helps cleans up scripts in Hollywood. He uh, definitely works with his brothers and Bruce. Um, 
so if you see a writing credit by Ivan, it's a pretty interesting thing. I have, I didn't get a chance to actually meet the guy because I was running low on time and I had my priorities that weekend when I went to that con, but I did watch the panel with him and Ted and he's definitely different than the other two. He seems to be a bit more subdued, but he did get that rate. I'm not sure if it's the Raimi or the Abrams. I don't remember if it comes, I don't know if it comes from mom and dad, but he got that funny gene that all three boys seem to have. So he's, he's, he's a, he's a character. Um, I would definitely like to, uh, sit and have a chat with him next time I, I like get a chance to see him at a con. He seems to be an interesting individual. Um, Rob Tappert again producing, Joseph Loduca doing the music. Um, now this one has two endings. There's a theatrical ending, which I'm calling the canon ending, because if we don't have that ending, we don't have anything after this. And then there's the original ending, and we'll get into the, the endings when I get to the end. Um... This one didn't do so well. I mean, it made its money back at the box office, but it really caught on on home video. That's when it became a cult classic. This may, I may have actually caught bits and pieces of this on television before I watched Evil Dead. As USA and Sci-Fi used to love to run this. But I didn't put two and two together until later, later. So... We have Ash, we, we start off with Ash himself giving the voiceover narration, getting us up to speed as to what happened. Okay, so that's where we get our other Linda. And again, it's, you gotta remember, by, at this point, Ash is really messed up. So... If continuity doesn't make sense, just attribute it to Ash and his mental distress, not wanting to either delve into it, sugarcoating de details, what whatever you what may have, you know. I, I I like to I don't want to say give Ash excuses, but it kind of feels like I am giving him a little bit of a reasoning as to why he's such an unreliable narrator. But again, if you were to put yourself through something this horrific and think about how you would probably break. The man's handling it pretty damn well at this point. So he gets sucked through a time vortex with his car and gets taken as a prisoner of war by Lord Arthur because Lord Arthur and Duke Henry are fighting kind of border skirmishes, I think, as well as the Deadites attacking both groups. Um, they are transported to a castle, which I'm making the educated guess is Castle Condar. Um, that they refer to in Evil Dead 2. And so it's him and a bunch of Duke, Duke Henry's men are taken prisoner. <coughs> Excuse me. Led to the castle in chains by Lord Arthur and his men. Now, their way of getting rid of prisoners of war, they don't ransom them like any normal medieval um, knight would do. No, they throw them into the pit, which has deadites in it basically they're executing them they throw one of duke henry's men in there and uh bloodbath just literally blood geyser very reminiscent of the way glenn died in nightmare on elm street another one we'll have to go through um eventually they throw ash in next oh wait i gotta backtrack on the way in there, we're introduced to Sheila, the M. Beth Davids character. She's under the impression that Ash was one of Duke Henry's men and is responsible for her brother's death. So that's how she's introduced. And I believe she throws a rock at him while he's standing on the edge of the pit, knocks him dizzy, which therefore allows uh, one of the guards to throw him in the pit. Now, the pit's basically exactly what you think of it. It is a big, dark pit with water at the bottom of it. And there's a deadite witch, and then we find out later it's kind of a deadite troll looking thing. Really great effects by KNB and group. They also had the, the original Evil Dead effects guy came back to um, put his input in and, and, and do some, some of the stuff as well. Uh, what was his name? His 
name was. I do not see it. Now, Danny Elfman also did do some music for this. He wrote the March of the Dead theme. And you, you can pick it out. It's good. Elfman's got a style and it's very, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't find the guy's name. But I mentioned it, I believe, in the first one. So he came back to help with the effects as well. Um, so Ash is in the pit. He fights the pit monsters. Manages to get out because the wise man gives him back his uh, chainsaw. I'm assuming he also at some point gave him back the shotgun. Um, and when he gets out, this is where quippy classic Ash is really showcased. He calls them primates and primitive screw heads and <laughs> just classic Bruce Campbell Ash. That, that's like, that's it. He's very quotable and very, very quippy and I love every second. Um, so of course they're all impressed. The wise man has them convinced that he's the chosen one sent to help them. He just wants to get back to his own time. Um, so they kind of treat him like a hero for a while and they're like, no. And the wise man and Arthur are like, no, you must go questing for the book. He agrees so that he can get back. Um, and this is where the, the replacement of the hand happens. Um, between an armored glove and Ash's stash of, or not stash, but knowledge of, uh, engineering. I wonder what Ash was going to college for, because it almost looks like he was going to be, like, an engineer or something. He manages to get an artic, make an articulate glove. It's a great way for them to hide Bruce's hand after making the decision to cut his, his, Ash's hand off in the second one. Um... So he goes questing for the book. He ends up in a windmill. Sorry, I could not think of that word uh, on the quest. And he, the deadites are already messing with him. There, he breaks a mirror and all the little reflections of ash turn into little mini ashes. Kind of like um, Gulliver's Travels. This is where the Three Stooges type, Looney Tunes type comedy violence comes in. Those things put poor Ash through the ringer. Um, they end up knocking him out, tying him to the ground. Again, very Gulliver's Travels. And they make him swallow one of their own. Which then brings in more comedy. Him drinking boiling water to try and kill the thing. And... It causes him to sprout a second ash, which it splits from him. So we have good ash and a bad ash. Comedy fight ensues. Um, bad ash punching and going, here are goody tissues, here are goody tissues. Ash gets the gun, blasts uh, bad ash, good, bad. I'm the guy with the gun. Uh, dismembers the body and goes to bury it and the head's still talking at him while, you know. Goes to the graveyard to collect the Necronomicon because apparently the Necronomicon has got the spell that will send him back and will allow the occupants of Castle Condar to... Mm, thought I was going to sneeze. To rid themselves of the Deadites. There's three books! A little bit of hilarity ensues when he tries to figure out which book it is. Finally picks one. And the wise man told him before he set off. When you pick the book up, thou must recite the words. Kalatu, Berata, Nikto. Ash forgets the last word. <laughs> Stumbles and coughs through it. It's Kalatu, Berata, Necti, Nickel. Definitely an N word. Which causes things to go bad. Bad Ash, Evil Ash, whatever you want to call him, rises from the dead. And um, they're hot on and it starts raising an army of the dead, which is hot on Ash's heels. Ash returns with the book and he's trying to get them to send him back. 
Now, at this point, I do believe he and Sheila had started a romantic relationship. She's very disappointed in him. Calls him a coward. And there, the, what a, Lord Arthur scouts, like, yeah, Army of the Dead coming two days away, or however long. Finally, Ash decides to do the right thing and stands up and he's like, I'm going to stay and fight. Who's with me? And a bunch of the vill villagers are like, you have my bow, you have my axe, you know, very Lord of the Rings. Um, if you're playing Spot the Ted, he's in that. I'm not going to tell you who he is. Spot the Ted. You almost don't recognize him because of the wig. Um, so... They bring the Delta wreck in, and in the trunk, Ash has got a book on chemistry and engineering, and he teaches them how to make gunpowder and how to use martial arts. I'm like wondering how in the hell Ash knows all of this stuff. Somehow in the whole thing, Ash learns how to fight with a sword. They send a winged deadite, which kidnaps Sheila, brings her to the graveyard as they're, you know, amassing more skeletons. They're literally digging them up out of the ground. Um, Bad Ash turns her deadite, and the battle ensues. Um, this is where, if you are a fan of those old 1960s Sinbad movies, Jason and the Argonauts, Clash of the Titans from the late 70s, early 80s, um, old, again, I keep saying this going back to Evil Dead 2, Harry House and um, special effects with the stop motion, it's all there. This is like just an homage to all of that free for all. It is just a blast. This is a movie that I would show my teenagers quite easily if I had one. Um, I was a teenager when it came out. It, other than a few curse words, it's very appropriate for most kids even. Um, so this is the more family friendly out of all of them. I want to say, and I, I'm sorry if I am mangling this. Someone at a Texas Frightmare asked Ted on his panel. This is on YouTube. Again, if I remember, I'll link it down below what his favorite Evil Dead movie was. And he said he loved them all for different reasons. And the reason why he liked this one was because it's the most family friendly. You could watch it as a family. I thought that was a really nice thing for him to say. Uh, very, very intelligent thing for him to point out. Because he could have just said, you know, two, because I had the biggest part, you know. He could have been a schmooze. He could have been kind of funny. But no, he actually gave a very intelligent response. All in all, we end up defeating the Deadites and getting Sheila back to normal. And Ash, they make the potion, and he goes back to his time. Now, we have two endings, right? The ending that ended up in the theater is what is also called the Esmar ending. This is the ending that allows us to keep going and go into Ash versus Evil Dead. Um, he's back working at Esmar, uh, like he was in the beginning. And uh, he's telling one of his co-workers... Uh, you know who the co-worker is played by. <laughs> um, a very, very adorable 20-something Ted Raimi. I, he looks so bored. Now, as someone who lives in their own S-Mart hell, I work retail, like the big box, you know, S-Mart. I recognize that bored look. I get it a lot. So, bravo, Ted, for getting that very, very bored as, uh, retail worker face. So Ash, you know, he's like, I could have stayed with them. I could have led them. But no, I came back here. And of course, the character, the S smart clerk that Ted's playing, I believe I saw on Wikipedia, the, the character's name was Anthony. Anthony's like, yeah, so did you say the words right this time? Obviously very bored. He's heard this story a million and one times. And Ash's like, I said them. Maybe not every single syllable, but I said them. Well, there's this cute little cashier who's like, you know that story about how you saved the world and everything? I think it's kind of cute. They're having this exchange, and it turns one of the customers turns around, and she's a deadite. So the deadites have not been defeated. We are left with um, Ash defeating that particular deadite, and uh, gets the girl. And I, yeah, it's the happy, mega happy ending. Yeah, so 
just a shout out for my husband's t-shirt. Hail to the king, baby. That is one of his uh, iconic lines. Uh, hubby let me borrow the t-shirt just for this. I feel so special. Um, now, the second ending was the ending that, that Sam really wanted, but, the, but Universal didn't like it. Where, and it kind of ends up getting coming into fruition anyway at the end of Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 3. We will talk about that when it comes up. But this ending, they give him the potion and they tell him you must take, I think it's six drops. We'll, we'll, we'll put you in a sleep and you will wake up back in your time. So they wheel the Delta and Ash off into a cave, seal him up. He loses track of how many drops he took and oversleeps and wakes up in a post-apocalyptic wasteland and they were going to leave it at that um open-ended so that they could make another sequel so since we got the tv show i'm calling the theatrical s smart ending the the canon ending and that's that's the ending i prefer to watch now either one i like though as a trilogy these films all three of them have a different flavor the first one is straight up brutal DIY horror. The second one is one of the standards in horror comedy. It's over the top. We're starting to get, again, Ash at, at getting the quippiness, getting the attitude. And then the third one is this sword and sorcery meets a little bit of horror fun fest with lots of Three Stooges references. It's, it's very on its ear, but it's, it's very, if you're a film buff, like if you like these genres, you're going to see all the influence and you're just going to, you're just going to be happy. These are great popcorn movies. So at this point in the timeline, this is the end of the, of the franchise for a while. Um, like I said, 1993, everybody moved on to do other things. Bruce ended up doing Briscoe County Jr. after this for a while. Uh, I want to say that's when Ted was on Sequest. Sam went on and did so many other movies. And Renaissance Pictures as a production company produced, uh, let's see, what can I, uh, other than Xena and Hercules, uh, they were part of the American Gothic television series production company. They did a lot of movies. Um, so everybody was working. This whole time from 1993 to, I want to say it was, was it 2015? In the 2000s, the 2010s, I will double check my dates when I get to making those videos. Um, the franchise just grew. We got a stage musical, which I have a bootleg copy of that I want to watch. I'm really pissed because my local area ran it annually around Halloween, I believe. No, just before Halloween, during the summer, because of Halloween, that particular place switched over to a haunt for years. And I never got the chance to do it before they got shut down for noise ordinance. So I'm hopefully going to watch that bootleg. Maybe I'll talk about that. I don't know. Uh, but it's actually getting a resurgence again, and I'm seeing a lot more places are doing it. So, maybe one day it'll actually hit Broadway. Because I don't think it ever did Broadway. I think it was off Broadway and then went touring. And then local uh, troops could get a hold of it. We had at least two video games. Regeneration and Dead by Dawn. Where Bruce did voices and Ted did came in and, and voiced for one of the characters and one of them too. I have not watched playthroughs for those. I do have the, some on YouTube saved that I'd love to watch. But again, because watching video game playthroughs are so long, don't always have the time for that. We got a comic book series. Ash versus Freddy versus Jason. At our Army of Darkness meets Xena Warrior Princess. There's a bunch of them. Do I have them in my notes? Yeah, okay. We have comics. We have comics for the movie adaptation of Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness, Ashes to Ashes. Army of Darkness, Shop Till You Drop Dead. Army of Darkness versus Reanimator. I really need to get a hold of these because I like comics a lot. Uh, Army of Darkness, Old School. 
Army of Darkness, Ash versus the Classic Monsters. That could be a good one. Marvel Zombies versus the Ar Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness from the Ashes. Army of Darkness, Long Road Home. Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. Freddy versus Jason, Jason versus Ash the Nightmare Warriors. Army of Darkness uh, crossed over with Xena Warrior Princess. Why not? Xena versus Army of Darkness. What? Again? Army of Darkness versus Hack and Slash. You know, so that's all the comics. I need to get a hold of these. I love comics. So this is going to be fun to watch. Um, he's become a mod that you can make in many MMORPGs online. So the, the momentum for the, the franchise just kept growing and growing and growing. So I want to say it was 2013 they decided to put a new Evil Dead movie out, but it has a completely different cast. Same idea as the first one. So it's kind of a remake, kind of a reboot, kind of a story on its own. It's in a cabin with the Necronomicon. Different group of people, different set of craziness. It did well, but a lot of people are like, where's Ash? Now, I know I had heard he had a cameo at the very, very end of a post uh, credit scene. Again, I have not seen this one. It is on my list of things to watch. Um, so everyone's like, what's going on with Ash? Where's Ash? What's going on with Ash? So Stars, the cable company, and Renaissance Pictures gave us our wish. So the next step from this is Ash versus Evil Dead. What was Ash doing for 30 years from that point at the end of Army of Darkness to today? And what's going on from today to the end of that series? I cannot get enough of these guys. They all work very well together. Uh, pull K and B effects in there and you've quite literally got one of my favorite afternoons. I really wish that Sam would go back to directing horror with these guys, with Bruce, with his brother. Um, I'd say bring back Danny Hicks, but I believe he's passed on. You know, give me more of this stuff. Although I am very happy with Raimi's Multiverse of Madness. But Sony, I know you're holding, still holding on to one Marvel character. And I know you've worked with Disney and Marvel to bring Spidey into the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe. And you've brought me J. Jonah Jameson. But you ain't brought me my Hoffman back. There's another Raimi collective that uh, character that needs to come back. Those of you who know, know. Those of you who don't, eventually I will elaborate on that. But that was Army of Darkness. And again, I highly suggest watching these as a group, but they all do stand alone because of those recaps at the beginning. It's a hoot. If Universal really wanted to, I think they could create hype around Army of Darkness and do like a Deadite scare zone at, um, Halloween Horror Nights in one of the parks. I think that would be really cool. I'd also kind of like to see a filmed version of the musical, just so that it's easier to get a hold of. Uh, do I think Bruce would come back and do that? Oh, hell no. Although I'd pay good money. I heard he can sing. I would pay good money to see that. I'd pay good money to see Bruce do a lot of things, though. Um... And eventually, I probably will end up seeing Bruce do a lot of different things because I'm going to eventually dive deeper into his um, filmography. And he will get a video on his own as well. I can think of a handful of people that I would do videos on for themselves uh, as, like, actor profiles. So, yeah, we have... Three seasons of Ash vs. Evil Dead to go through, and I do believe those will each be their own videos, so we will go a little bit, probably a little bit past the month of August, or we'll end right at the end of August. So on that note, I'm just going to say goodnight to you guys, and, you know, again, 
any chats, any recommendations, any questions, y'all want to call me out for gushing, the comments are right down there. I read every one of them, like the three I get every other video. And, uh, you know, tell me what you think about, like, maybe my thoughts that, you know, Ash with all the PTSD and survivor's guilt and everything, you know, do, do you think I'm spot on? Do you think I'm blowing smoke up my own rear end? What, what do you think? Uh, um, if you've played the video games, let me know. Let me know what those storylines are like. Because I know that Army of Darkness, the movie ends, and then the comic books go off into their own little world. And then we have Ash vs. Evil Dead at its own continuation. So there's a lot of AUs, alternate universes, and alternate takes, whatever you want to call it for this particular franchise, but there's just so much to play with, and Ash is such a dynamic, bombastic character. Um, I, I will say, Ash, Ash Williams, we will talk about his full name when it comes up. It's, it's definitely, um, not what you would expect, but, um, Ash Williams is definitely one of my favorite characters in horror. He's, and Bruce, I don't think anybody could have made Ash Ash but Bruce. I really don't think. I think Bruce is the magic ingredient in that that component it, or that recipe. If, if you were to have given that to any other actor of about the same age, I don't think Ash would have come off as so, come off so lovably in, in, in such a he can be a douchebag. But he's still so lovable. I don't understand it. If a guy like him hit on me in a bar, I'd be like, in a million years, dude. Not that a guy like him in a bar would hit on me, but I'd be like, in a million years, dude. But, like, I'm watching Ash, and I'm like, I would. I definitely would. I, I don't. I don't. Under it's got to be something about the Campbell. It's got to be something about Bruce. But I've nattered on long enough. I have gushed about Bruce long enough. So... Good night, guys. Good night, my creeplings. And I'll see you next time. Bye.